Okay, today we look at a rational function. We have uh, f of x equals 3x over x plus 2. And I'm going to move rather quickly here until somebody slows me down. But <laughs> the x-intercept occurs when the function is equal to 0. So 0 equals 3x over x plus 2. True or false? When the top is equal to 0, the whole thing's equal to 0. True. Where is the top equal to 0? At 0. The y-intercept occurs when what is equal to 0? When x is 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And I get 0 divided by 2. And what is... Oh, I'm so sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Come on in. Come on in. I'm just sorry. You're good to go. Sorry. Because I always told you guys we had a lunch on Fridays. I did. I know. I'm sorry. Things have changed. So, um, the y-intercepts, okay, are going to occur when x is equal to 0. So, if I plug in 0 for x, I get 0 divided by 2 is 0. So, the y-intercept is 0. So you can see that it goes through the um, origin. Now what I'm going to do is with this rational function, what number is not part of the domain? Negative 2. Therefore, I have a vertical asymptote, in this case, at negative 2. A vertical line has the equation of x equals. The horizontal asymptote is the end behavior of a function, what it looks like as it goes towards infinity. So to figure out its horizontal asymptote, I say what happens as the values go towards positive or negative infinity. How do we evaluate that limit? Take out an x. Limit as x goes to, and I'll even write plus or minus because it won't matter in this situation. 3 times x over x times 1 plus 2 over x. So, as I go to plus or minus infinity, this uh, 2 over x goes to 0. The x's go away, and I'm just left with 3. So, its end behavior looks like the line y equals 3. That's what it wants to look like most of the time. Sorry, pal. No, we're gone in two minutes. Okay, now we have those pieces, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the first derivative test. In order to do the first derivative, what do I have to use? The quotient rule. Right, and then we use the product with the chain. I'm going to use the quotient rule. What's the derivative of the top? Times x plus 2 minus the top 3x times what's the derivative of the bottom? 1. All divided by the bottom squared. So, look at the top. I'll get 3x minus 3x, which is, and 3 times 2 is 6. That's the derivative we pick up from there. What do lunch. Okay, here we go. So that's our derivative. And as we graph it, f prime of x on the number line, um, is the top ever equal to 0? So is the derivative ever equal to 0? No. It's got a 6. The top is never equal to 0, so the derivative is never equal to 0. If the derivative is never equal to 0, this graph does not have what? What is the first derivative test? As well as your local min and max. So it does not have a local min or max. Because the first derivative is never equal to zero. Your critical points are where the first derivative is equal to zero and where the first derivative is undefined. So you tell me, where is this first derivative undefined? Negative 2. No 
matter what we plug in, we're going to square it, and it's going to become positive, correct? And the top is positive. This is always, therefore, it is never decreasing. We give infinity to negative 2, union with negative 2, infinity. Is it ever decreasing? No. Concavity occurs for the second derivative. I will find the second derivative. Now, I made this mistake last hour. They got really upset, so I will settle down here. F prime of x is equal to 6 times x plus 2 to the negative 2, correct? So if you just have a constant, it's nice to do that. This way, the derivative is very easy to find. I simply set up the chain rule, 6u to the negative 2 and x plus 2. The derivative of x plus 2 is 1, and the derivative of 6u to the negative 2 is negative 12u to the negative 3. So you can see the second derivative <coughs> is going to be negative 12 over x plus 2 to the third power. Fair? Draw our <coughs> number line for testing. True or false? This second derivative is never equal to zero. True, because the top can never be equal to zero. Negative 12 is never equal to zero. So, therefore, if it's never equal to zero, I do not have what? I do not have an inflection point. However, where is the second derivative undefined? Are you surprised by that? No. It's not even part of the domain of the original function, so we, we know that's correct. Let's look at the concavity. Let's test negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2. Negative 1 to the third. Negative 1. Negative divided by negative. Positive. Let's plug in 0. 0 plus 2. Positive, cubed, positive, negative divided by positive. So therefore, I am concave up where? And I'm concave down from. Let's now sketch a perfect graph. Okay, I have a horizontal asymptote of positive 3. I have a vertical asymptote of negative 2. I have x and y intercepts of 0 and 0. I do not have a local max or local min. I do not have a point of inflection. I will follow the asymptotes. However, do I draw it in the one that's, do I use the one that's down or the one that's up? How do you know? Is it ever decreasing? No. So if I drew it like this, it would be decreasing, wouldn't it? Furthermore, it says over that interval, negative infinity to negative 2, it's concave up. This would be concave down. So you can use these description pieces to be able to figure that out. It's increasing and concave up. For the next part, it's obvious to see which quadrant I am in. 
How do I know? Because you have the point. However, it says I am still increasing. If I was decreasing, I would start up and I would go down. But so I'm going to start down. I'm going to draw this going up. And that is an excellent graph of... this one oh yes yes yeah okay so excellent question put forward next one here we go Let's start with my intercepts. The x-intercept occurs when the function is equal to zero. Look at this function. Where is the top equal to zero? Zero, thank you. So at x equals zero, the function is equal to zero. The y-intercept occurs when x is equal to zero. If you plug zero in for x, you get zero divided by negative one. What's zero divided by negative one? So you have x and y-intercepts of zero and zero, so therefore this one also goes through the origin. In order to find the vertical asymptotes, I look to see where the function is undefined. Where is it undefined? Very good. So x equals positive 1 and x equals negative 1. I look at where the function is undefined. Where is the denominator equal to 0? And I have positive 1 and negative 1. <coughs> Think about the horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote is as you go to infinity, how is the function behaving? So that's why we do this. Limit as x goes to positive or negative infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus 1. Now, Marcus is absolutely correct. It is 2. Can you all see that? So you can simply just take 2x squared and divide it by x squared times 1 minus 1 over x squared. And that should be enough of an indication to say that's going to be 0. Those cancel. 2 over 1 is 2. You can graph it as well. You don't have to necessarily go through all the work. When I look at this type of graph, I say, okay, it's going to be 2. If I had an x to the third in the denominator, then it would be zero. So you have to decide by looking at the graph what the type of behavior it's going to have. All right. So uh, let's now do the intervals of increase and decrease in concavity. We'll do our tests. F prime of x equals, I'm going to use the quotient rule. What's the derivative of the top? 4x times the bottom minus 4x derivative of the bottom is 2x. 2x times 4x is? No, 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 no. Derivative of the bottom is 2x. 4x to the third. Yep. Yes, I'm sorry. I thought you were actually doing the second derivative. Okay. The derivative of x squared minus 1? 2x, thank you. Now you're making fun of me. you square the bottom all right so what we get is 4x to the third minus 4x minus 4x to the third all over x squared minus 1 squared what happens get negative 4x over x squared minus 1 squared draw my number one True or false? The numerator is never equal to zero. False. Where is negative 4x equal to zero? So I do have a spot where it's equal to zero. Where is the denominator equal to zero? Are you surprised? No, we knew that since we had vertical asymptotes there, that they were not part of the domain, so therefore they were going to come up as part of our critical points. Note the first derivative and second derivative 
understand that. They recognize that, and so they should always come up there. So now we could go through our testing. So again, you have negative 4x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Now, just think about this. I'm trying to help you. True or false, the denominator is always positive. Why? So I don't have to worry about the denominator when I'm doing the sign test. I can just focus on the numerator. Plug in negative 2, it's going to be positive. If you plug in negative 0.5, positive. If you plug in positive 0.5, and if you plug in positive 2, negative. So therefore, we do have some interesting points here. We have increasing. What are the intervals? Uh, not 0, but negative 1. Union with negative 1 to 0. You must, must divide it up because negative 1 is not included in the domain, so you cannot include it in your intervals. Decreasing. Very good. Now, first derivative also tells me local max and local min. <clears throat> Do I change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing? Yes, right here. Okay, is it equal, is the derivative equal to zero at zero? So therefore, I do have a local max or local min. Which one is it? A local max. It occurs at zero. If I plug zero into the original, what do you get? Zero. So at the origin, I have x and y intercepts. I also have a local max. Are you going to have a local min? No. No. Second derivative, f double prime of x. I, I do care about you. Despite what you may think, I really do care about your learning. I want to set you up for success. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. whatever I feel that day. <laughs> Only students I don't like. Do I not tell about the A lunch issue? <laughs> All right. I know I, I apologize, you guys. I thought about that yesterday, and the day just got away from me. I was going to try to tell you, so my bad. It won't happen again. Okay, I must do the quotient rule, derivative of the top. Times x squared minus 1 quantity squared minus the top left alone, so plus 4x times the derivative of the bottom, derivative of the bottom, u squared, and um, x squared minus 1, 2u, and 2x, so I get 4x times x squared minus 1, all over x squared minus 1 to the fourth. What are what do all the terms share in common? An x squared minus 1, correct? Do you agree I can just cancel out an x squared minus 1 from each of the terms? Okay. So I have f double pr prime of x is equal to negative 4 times x squared minus 1 plus this x squared minus one, minus 1 goes away. That one went to 1. So plus 16x squared over x squared minus 1 to the third. Let's simplify. Negative 4 times x squared plus 16x squared. 12x squared. Negative 4 times negative 1. Go. I divided out an x squared minus 1 from everything. So I took one out of the top, I took one out of the bottom, and they cancel. You have half of a page for room. Sam, how do we respond to this situation when I give them extra space, but it doesn't fit in the right order. 
to. Would it be inappropriate if I pointed and laughed and said, "Oh, that's not appropriate." Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's look at our derivative. True or false? The derivative is equal to zero for some value of x. The derivative is never equal to zero. True or false? The derivative is the. I mean, I'm sorry. The top is never equal to zero. True or false? The top is always positive. Yeah. You square it. It's gonna be positive times by positive. Add a positive. The top is always positive. It's never equal to zero. So therefore, I don't have an inflection point because the second derivative is never equal to zero. So I did have a local max, but I do not have an inflection point because the top. The second derivative is never equal to zero because the top is never equal to zero. The top is always positive. So therefore, my sign change, all I need to think about is the denominator. Where is the denominator equal to zero? And therefore, the second derivative does not exist at, yes, negative one and positive one. Very good. So the top is always positive. I don't need to consider it when I do my interval testing. I will plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared. Positive. Minus 1. Positive to the third. Positive. So I know that this portion is positive. 0. I get a negative 1 to the third, which is negative. And positive 2 will be positive. So therefore, I now know my intervals of concavity. I am going to be concave up where? And I'm concave down from negative 1 to 1. I now have enough information to sketch a perfect graph. The second derivative is never equal to zero because the top is never equal to zero. I have vertical asymptotes at positive one and at negative one. I also have a horizontal asymptote at 2. I know that the graph goes through the point 0, 0. Let's look before that and see if it's in the top or the bottom. It says to me that from negative infinity to negative 1, it's concave up and it's increasing. So will it be on the top or bottom? Top. In the other side, am I, so from 1 to infinity, am I concave up or concave down? Up, and am I increasing or decreasing? So that means I must and in the middle from zero or from negative one to positive one, I'm concave down. Very good. And you have a local max. So you know what's going to come up? It's going to go back down. So, with our short time remaining, I will take out my calculator, y equals, and I'll type in 2x squared divided by parentheses x squared minus 1, and I'm going to change my window to, we'll go by 6s.
Come on. I mean. Sure. Your assignment is right here. I'll on the board. I, if I were you, I would watch Braveheart at some time in my life. Great movie. I would. Uh, I will tell you in a second. So, um, I have uh, assignments to hand out to you. This is, or I'm sorry, a, a paper's handout to you so you can do your assignment. That's from section 4.5. Uh, I think it's like 271 or something like that. And uh, so I, I'm going to give you all day on Monday in class to work. Don't just save everything for Monday in class. Start this weekend. But these problems you must do. 18, 19, and 24, that's if you've got some extra time and you're looking for a little bit of a challenge.